of scraps and today we're going to be digitizing a set of heart-shaped balloons. Now this can be done in Stitch Artist 1, 2, or 3. I will be working in 3 so please if you're in Stitch Artist 1 and you want to double check the tools available to you I have a picture on my blog which is known as scraps.blogspot.com. I suggest you check it out. In order to begin digitizing my graphic I select, I opened my program and selected the word image and then I navigated to where I saved my image which by the way is downloaded from Google. I just did a Google search on hearts, black and white hearts and it got some tremendous number. Happened to like this one. I would select open but it's already on my screen so I'm going to cancel out and here it sits. If for some reason you think you've opened an image but you have this on your toolbar there's like a framed portrait and it's a hide or show background image if the background of that is a light gray it is it's not turned on you need to select it and it will turn a dark gray in order to visualize your image let's get started digitizing to do that I have to first create an outline that is the bones of this program when it comes to applying stitches I'm going to do that not by manually drawing yet the outline but by using the magic wand tool. I do believe the magic wand is highly underrated and I've begun using it for my basic outline quite a bit more than I did in the beginning and I'm a long time digitizer so I'm very much used to manual input of stitches but let's get started. Okay, I'm going to select my magic wand and over on the right hand end you get a message it says wand sensitivity default is 30. I didn't know that was there for the longest time. I'm telling tales on myself and consequently I was really frustrated with the magic wand because everything I would trace with it looked terrible. I mean it was jagged it was just it wasn't good it was very pixelated it looked like those little boxes you know. So then I started playing with it and what I determined depending on the image I usually had to bump the sensitivity up. Today I usually work with the, in the realm of 180 to 200 on the sensitivity and today I'll start at 180. That said I'm going to come over here to my gray area and in the center I'm going to left mouse click and you can see that I get an outline of the entire image. I don't want the entire image. Why did I get it? In order to outline it, the magic wand will move through by color variations or colors. So in order to outline, this is a monochromatic image. In other words, really it's two colors. And it is gray and it is white. So it actually outlines the entire gray segment. That gray segment is what I now have visualized on my screen. We are going to edit out the ties to these balloons. It'll be a while but we're going to do it. But if you look in the objects panel you can see it. Now when I look at this it's going to be hard to see on top of the image. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and I also want to get an outline of this crescent shape. So I am going to move in closer and I'm going to select my my tool. It remains at a sensitivity of 180 and I'm going to select the outline and it's fine for what we're going to need. Move off the image and there it is. So now I can actually scroll back out and there's my image. Let's turn off the image and you can see and actually even though this doesn't look real smooth, I think for our purposes it's going to be just fine. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit the parts of the balloons that we need. I've already turned off, toggled off my image so I get a much better visual of my balloons and I'm going to scroll or zoom in to the area that I want to fix. And I want to fix the part between here and there on both balloons, just the bottom tip. 
To do that, I'm going to select my line and I get my nodes. That node, that node. In order to, what I want to do is I want to create a break between the, I don't know, what would you call them, the strings of the balloons and the tip of the balloon. In order to do the break, I left mouse click and hold and draw a lasso around my two nodes. Let go of my mouse and they're highlighted, they turn dark. Pointing at one of them, I right mouse click and I'll get a drop down menu and I select break across. Now I'm going to move to the other side. Select the image, left mouse click, lasso the two nodes, point to it, break across. And you can see now that I have a heart and a heart. And I have a separate line. That's great. I'm glad. But I have another problem. And I don't know why this happened. Every time I've done this, I get a funny little twist right here. I think it has to do with these two nodes and the fact that it's it takes three nodes to create a, a curve. So all I'm going to do is I highlight my nodes, grab my Bessier handle, and drag it out to where I'm satisfied with my curve on my heart. And it's fixed. No problem. For now, I want to go ahead and get rid of these. Yeah, don't panic. I'm going to delete them. And now I have two hearts that I can work with. The two hearts are going to be filled, and then we're going to create a little bit of a a highlight area. We're also going to create an outline. Let's get ready for the outline. Before we apply stitches, we're going to select both hearts and we're going to copy it and paste it and move it away because we just want the outlines. In Stitch Artist 3, this isn't a necessary step, but for Stitch Artist 1, it is. I think it is for Stitch Artist 2 as well. So to copy on my Mac, it's Command C. On a PC, it's Control C. And now I'm going to paste. A Mac is Command V. And on a PC, it's Control V. And you can see over in my Objects menu, I have four hearts, and that's perfect. The last two, I'm just going to move to the side. Excuse me, it's to the side. Now I can take and I can group them, I believe. We'll try Command G. See what happens. Yep, there they are. Control G on a Mac, Contra Command G on the PC, and they're grouped so I can move them as a unit. On this particular heart, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select it, and I'm going to select my fill, just a plain old fill. And it comes in at four points. Sometimes the density is a little bit much, and that's fine. I'm going to, this is the underlay. I'm going to leave the underlay as it stands. It is according to this black, but I have to tell you it's because my outline was black, and I don't know why I'm getting all these screens. Let's go ahead and select this. I'm going to leave it at a tatami, but I want to change my angle of stitching. The reason is the way the stitches lay is how any kind of polyester or shiny stitch or shiny thread will pick up the light. So for this heart, I'm going to tilt it mm, kind of at a 45 degree angle. It's the angle of the stitching hat is the line with the yellow, and you can move. One of them becomes a fixed point, the other becomes a movable point. So I'm going to move that down like that, and I'm going to change my color to pink, and say OK. Now I'm going to move to my second heart, which actually is in the objects as first, but that's beside the point. I'm going to fill it, and it comes up with exactly the same stitch but I'm going to create the angle opposite. So the angle of the stitching on this heart goes that direction, the angle of the stitching on this one goes that direction. And I kind of want to keep that in mind and I'll show you why in just a few minutes. 
and I'm going to change that particular heart, the color, to red. Let's see, okay. And now this crescent shape is going to be filled with the satin column. And I want to zoom in again. If you can see the satin column, it goes across. But what I want to do is I want to alter it. I don't want it really dense. And I don't want a lot of underlay. So the underlay is the second button under color. And I'm simply going to turn off all of it. It doesn't need much underlay because it's laying over a fill stitch. And I return to my stitching and I'm going to decrease the density. Now I know it sounds funny, but it, if I go four point, the higher the points, the lighter the stitch. Okay, it's it's backwards to what I think, or what it seems like. I'm gonna decrease the density to about a 7.5, just to give it a little bit of a light. Now I'm gonna create. I can leave it in white, or I can go with a pale pink. I think I'm just going to leave it white. And what thread I choose in the end isn't going to make a bit of difference in the world. So now I have two balloons that are absolutely filled. But I want a little emphasis on it. So I'm going to select, remember the, the set I grouped right here? I'm going to bring it and put it back over the original file. And if I zoom in, I can see exactly where this lays. Get them so precisely placed, it's ridiculous. Now, I can do two things. I can go with a satin. I can do an applique. I could do a motif. Or I can do a straight stitch. It's my choice. I think I'm just going to do the straight stitch. But once I do my straight stitch, I want it a little bit thicker, so I'm going to do a bean stitch. Three passes, and I think I'll make it a little longer, 2.8. And that's going to give me a nice, not heavy, well it is heavy, but it's going to give me a nice outline. Now, that particular stitch, I can actually change the color of, and I'm going to change it to I could change it for both of them, but I think I think I'll leave it the same color on both because it'll just give me some emphasis. And so now I've finished my balloons. And I also have to show you one more thing on this. If I take that run stitch, it ends right there. I'm gonna whoops. Get to know your back. It ends down here. I'm going to move my start up to here. To move the start and stop, you hover and then drag. And then I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to move my start to that point and my stop to the same point. And what that does is that creates a very short little jump over there, so it technically doesn't even, unless it's really obvious, it doesn't even need to be trimmed out. Um, back in the old days, when I started digitizing, you had to stitch efficiently because you had to trim every single stitch. The only other thing I'm going to check on on these is the tie at entry and tie at exit. So you select this, the stitch, you go to the bow tie, Tie at entry, tie at exit. And I could do that on my column stitch two. When it's in the stitch menu, bow tie, tie at entry, tie at exit. And that has the balloons digitized. Finish up our balloons. Now remember I've said in the old days, one of the key words of digitizing was efficiency and stitching. 
and so we're going to have to actually utilize a couple of those tricks in finishing out the, the ties for this balloon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to digitize a path from the tip of this balloon to the center. Then I'm going to go from the center to the end and then back again. Okay, And I'm going to do that for this one, then center to end of heart, end of heart to center, to end of tie. In the end it won't look so bad. It will look actually very even in the stitching and I promise you it will stitch very smoothly. So let's go ahead and zoom in and you can see what I'm going to do. There's a couple steps to this. We're going to be using our draw with points mode. We're going to insert using left mouse click at the end of the balloon and left mouse click in the center. It's a little off, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to right mouse click to set that and I'm going to add a run stitch and I'm going to go to my down arrow if it's not already selected and I'm going to put in a bean stitch. So heavier stitching. Now I'm going to again return to my draw with points and I'm going to take and I'm going to just about at the end of that first segment it's hard to see I know let me see if I can toggle that off so it'll be right about there let, I'll tell you what let me change the color of that to a brighter color yellow and eh, it doesn't help much but I'm going to go to the end of that stitch, left mouse click, and on my Mac I command left click, command click, command click, and I select right mouse click, sorry, and that is going to give me when I stitch it, it's going to give me a run, I'm going to insert a running stitch, but it's not going to be the bean stitch yet. It's going to be a single stitch. Okay, so I've done my first segment, which is up here. Starts here, ends here. My second segment starts at the center, ends at the end. And now I'm going to copy this second segment that's on my object menu as 1-9. I'm going to copy it. Remember that whole control command, copy. And I'm going to control command and in my objects menu I have two two running stitches that are curved that's how I know they're at the bottom of my objects menu now I need to change the beginning and the ending of this stitch so to do that I'm going to take and hover my mouse over the green bow drag it to the bottom hover my mouse over the red bow drag it to the top and now I'm going to go over to my run stitch and I'm going to go bean stitch, down arrow, select bean stitch, three passes so it'll come to one, two, three. And I'm going to right click. Now to see what we've done, let's toggle off the picture go to Stitch Simulator and I'm going to go to the orange part because that's all we really want to see as close as I can get and I'm going to slow it down as much as I can and watch what happens down that was pretty fast, let's watch it again and it ends there I'm going to go to the center with my put in points and I'm going to go to the end of my balloon and I'm going to select or move off and right click and that gives me a segment. Now I'm going to add my running stitch which I want it to be a single stitch so I go to my menu single stitch and it begins in the center and ends at the end. 
again, now this is what I meant, the same thing. I'm going to copy and paste this segment. So now I have two running stitches. Again, I'm going to take, hover on the green bow, drag it to the top, hover on the red bow, drag it to the bottom, go to my stitch menu, select bean. Now I'm going to finish it. Point enter, point, curved, 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 off the image, right click to set. Now this one, I only, well, we're going to do the same thing because we're going to end up back here at the bow. Okay, so I'm going to go in, select my right mouse click. I'm sorry, select my running stitch. Sorry about that. Single running stitch. And it's fine. Now I'm going to once again select run, copy, and paste it. Again, I'm going to move my ending to the middle this time and my beginning to the end. Remember we began placing our points here, we ended there. That was for this stitch. That was the next to the last one. Running single running stitch. This is going to be the bean stitch. What we're doing is we're creating a beginning and an ending at the same place. All right. Now we're going to finish our bow. Again, nodes begin at the middle, and I'm simply going to place curved nodes. I don't have to follow it perfectly, which is kind of cool. I want, I can arrange it just slightly. And I'm going to add my running stitch. And it's going to be a bean stitch. And if I want it just a little bit denser, I'll do five passes. And I think that's going to be good. And now I can actually make this smaller if I want to. The one thing I need to be aware of is that that center always needs to be at the center. Because it starts and stops at the center. Let's turn, let's scroll out, turn off our graphic. And that's pretty cute. I think it's it's going to look nice on whatever I use it for. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a little bit and I hope you learned how to digitize a little bit efficiently and uh, enjoy your balloons. Until next time.